Folks, let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstat. You can read Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report every Monday. He comes out with that report. He has updates that follow throughout the week. You can check it out on the front page of TFNN, folks, the Tiger Forex report. And let's just jump right into it. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy, and good morning, little Tommy. You say hi? You say hi to Teddy? I get bigger. I oh. get bigger. Oh. He's, 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 he's watching some truck videos, Teddy. He's deep in it right now. So we'll just talk some Forex, but uh, there he goes. You see? You see? Look at There you are. And where? You say hi to Teddy? You say hi? <laughs> yeah. So, oh. Teddy, where do you want to start things off, man? Uh, well, I can say the dollar is kind of a mixed bag of goods this week. So right now it's actually under pressure and over since probably the last 10 minutes or so. Um, but as you, it's, it's, it's really a mixed bag of goods. You know, I mean, you have the Australian dollar making new highs on the um, day and on the week. But then you have the New Zealand dollar that looks like it wants to sell off, you know. So the Japanese yen is kind of going sideways right now. The euro, I would say, is pretty much the only one that's showing some strength or trying to buffer its highs and maybe try and break out to the upside. And I think a lot of that has to do because the uh, ECB is expected to do at least a half a point raise now over the next two meetings. So considering that there's already a half a point figured in for our Fed over the next two to three meetings, I think that that's probably where you're seeing a little strength in the euro U.S. dollar right now. If we could jump to the yen, I was reading earlier, I had an article pulled up, and let me see if I can find it, but it was talking about, yeah, from Bloomberg, that the Bank of Japan even owns more than 100% of some of the debt as bonds go round and round. And uh, they're talking about here, you know, that eventually, and we've talked about it in terms of a new governor coming in there, um, mm -hmm. but pretty interesting when you look at it, Teddy, that they're even talking about that basically they own more than 100%, right? They buy it, they lend it out, and they buy it back again. Again, they're such a buyer in that market. Um, where, I guess, and when do you see that, that yen potentially changing? Because I got it up here. We're bumping up again maybe against the upper boundary of a potential channel. Um, but quite a pullback from the highs we've had recently in the yen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I would say that you're going to probably see most, most action in the yen probably after April going into May. So we have to get the transition for the new uh, Bank of Japan chairman. Once he's in place... I think that you're going to see that the, the biggest thing is that we know that the, the policy of the Ministry of Finance and the BOJ is starting to change, which is something that it hasn't done in a very, very long time. So once we have this turnover of leadership, which will happen in April, I think you'll start to see it impact the markets come May and June for sure when it comes to the yen and yen crosses. So meaning probably a lot of a little bit of uh, yen strength as well, you know, so and I, I would see that long term right now that the U.S. dollar yen and the and the yen versus other pairs is going to start to become very bullish for the uh, Japanese yen. Now, this is relative to how it's been behaving for the past year and a half. You've got to realize that we're in a very big trend where, you know, that the yen has gotten beaten up for a very long time. So for us to bounce the way we're doing right now, it's a nice correction. And I think what it's going to do is we'll see how this turnover happens in the spring and we'll see if we're going to either base and start to kind of pull back, meaning yen strength, or is it going to, is what's hat what they've been doing for decades going to come back to haunt them? We, time will tell with that one. So, but I think it's going to be where you're going to see short term yen strength once you get to the springtime period. Boy, it would, you know, one of the charts they have in this article on Bloomberg was just talking about they have a, a chart of their securities lending on one. Um, just mm -hmm. talking about trillions of yen and the spike recently in the last basically four years is off the charts. And then they talk about the government bond and purchases and, you know, same deal over the last three or four years, man, compared to I think this they have it starting at about 2005 or something like that. Nothing like it in terms of what they've been doing for government bond purchases um, and the securities lending is up to over eight trillion yen, which just dwarfs anything on that chart. Sure. And then you look at where their tenure. I mean, what's their tenure right now? Barely over zero or something like that. The yield on the Japanese right. tenure. So it would make sense, I guess. Um, right. What, what about crude when we go from there? Crude, obviously, crude. on the, the minds of, of many, sitting at about 80 bucks. Well, what's your take on mm -hmm. this crude market up from the lows recently? Uh, yeah, well, I think that uh, last week's high is going to get challenged again. And if we break out above that, I can see us going every bit into the upper 88, 89 handle, pushing 90 over the next uh, couple of weeks. So I'm bullish on crude right now. I think that we're making higher move highs, higher move lows. We've had a little pullback over the last couple of days, but I think this is just another buying opportunity right now for crude, so long term. Nice. 
And can you tell those listening, Teddy, because I know you've walked through it before, but when they sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, they get an archive of the webinar you did for your subscribers. Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, what is behind the Tiger Forex Report newsletter? Uh, about a 60-minute webinar, folks. You sign up, you get Teddy's service for the month, you pay $97, you gain access to the 60-minute webinar. And if you don't like it, it's not something you're using. Maybe you're just not trading what's going on out there. You cancel it. You get your money back. Can you walk um, those listening today just kind of what you walk your subscribers through in that 60 minutes for that webinar for subscribers? Oh, sure. Well, I break down basically how I uh, approach the uh, Tiger Forex report every week. So I look at uh, the dollar index. I look at the uh, interest rates and I look at crude because they're all factors in various of uh, uh, foreign currency pairs, you know, depending on like, for instance, crude impacts the yen. You know, interest rates impact all of the currency pairs, you know, and then the dollar index, you know, as a guide, you know, like there's times where like it's really driving the trend. And then there's times where we're in right now where I've been talking about where we have this divergence of currencies. So every every week I start with the beginning with those markets and the, where those are the core fundamentals. And then we move on to each individual pair, whether it's the euro U.S. dollar or the pound dollar. And then and then I get break down the analysis for those markets and how those um, variables should be impacting them, especially when it comes to breakouts and trend levels, you know, where if you have the uh, like, for instance, if the interest rate if yields start to rise really dramatically to over the course of the week, it should be typically bullish for the U.S. dollar or at least constrict any type of uh, lower trading bias for the U.S. dollar. And I incorporate those kinds of fundamentals into the report. That's awesome. And it's so cool because, you know, I've learned so much from you over the years, man. And, and right now it feels like at least Forex and tied in with yields like you're talking about and the central banks are just, you know, all on some type of a, a hiking cycle or, or maybe going to get there like the Bank of Japan eventually. It's just all so intermingled right now and they're all so related. So it's it's just so cool how all that stuff happens and, and what you've taught me and the listeners out there of those relationships. Um, you talk about crude, you talk about, you know, the dollar, the yen, how that all works. Folks, check it out on the front page of TFNN under newsletters. Teddy, we appreciate it, man. You're going to say goodbye to Teddy? You're going to say goodbye? You say bye? Say bye, Teddy. You say bye. <laughs> say bye. He's looking. There he is. <laughs> bye, you got Teddy. a little wave. <laughs> All right, Teddy, time. I appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, okay? All right, I'm going to go shovel snow now. <laughs> oh, stay warm, man. I saw that Chicago. I always pull it up. The feels like, the feels like is always wild there with that wind, man. Stay warm, okay? Thanks. Take care. Okay, man.